Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to talk about attribute directives. In the previous video, we talked about structural directives where we actually added and removed elements. Now, attribute directives, basically we changed the behavior of them. And we've done this in the past, we just didn't call them attribute directives, we changed them DOM properties, okay? But that's basically what these are. So I just wanted to go over another example of these directives themselves. So in before, when we used the brackets, we used we changed the DOM properties or the element attributes, right? So we said, you know, it was equal to something. And remember, this variable is taken from taken from the class down below, and it sends the information there. So now, um, what we're going to do is use ng class. Now, ng class would be one of those things where um, we don't actually have a a element attribute called ng class. So it's a little bit different, right? And what it basically says is that you can add or remove multiple classes to this particular element. So what will actually happen is, is that if you have, if you want to change things around in a very complex way, you might have more than one class and you might have 15 classes. And under one circumstance, you would want three of those classes to act up, but not the other 12 and, you know, and, and so on. So it can make your web application extraordinarily complex. So let's just focus on this ng class equals some class. What the syntax is, is that this is going to be a map. So it's going to be a map right down here. I'm just going to call it some class right there. And you're going to have the name of the um, class in quotations because it's a string and a bool afterwards whether or not it's true. So if it's true, then it will take on the properties of the class. If it's false, it will not. And so notice my style URLs is going to point to appcomponent.css right here. And again, I'm not very good at, let's, and we don't really need that. I'm, I'm not very good at calling classes. So I'll just say, dot first, dot second, dot third, dot fourth. So it's going to be red, large, italic, and with the yellow background. Just like that, okay? We don't need that really either. So that's what we're going to actually do. And so that's exactly what happens. We'll save it. And that's exactly what it looks like. Right there, okay? Now, what else can we actually do? Well, remember, we can actually change these bools themselves as we want. If we do change these bools, then it will actually change whether or not it will take that class property. So to make this really super simple, I'm just going to make a simple web application right here. So it's, it'll be a click and then switch bool. So it'll go down to this method and I'm going to submit the some class second or actually let's do first. First and then down here, switch bool, some class first is going to equal um not a not bool so if it comes down true it's going to be false if it comes down false it's going to be true so it's just going to switch it around okay this is just another way i did this in times past with and, and I, I typed it all out but this is just a simplification and so let's see what it looks like if i click on it it turns black because black is standard. It's not, we're taking away the value of the class and I click on it, it turns red again. So it just goes back and forth. Okay. And if I wanted to change things again, super simple here, I'm just going to say second, oops, that's not second, second, and then I'll change it down here. And this is not the best way to do it, but I'm just saying for simplicity sake, so we understand the concepts here. That's the purpose of the ng class attribute directive. It shrinks it back to standard text right there. And same thing, we could go third and fourth. Let's just do fourth because that yellow background is driving me a little crazy. And click on it it goes the what the, it goes away the background comes back okay so it's pretty straightforward but if you think about it there's quite a bit of things that you can actually do just remember map some class that's all you really have to understand and i think you can understand the rest of it um, and change your elements as you want to thank you